So does the graduate school that you go to matter in terms of your placement, job placement as a scholar, as a researcher, as a professor? So I want to talk about that today. So if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Massack. I'm an Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people that help me out that I want to pay the favor for to help you out. So this was Alexandro Esteve um, asked this, and um, if you don't know the rules to this channel, if I answer one of your questions, you got to go out and do something nice. It's got to be something random, and then leave comments of what you actually did, because everybody's really curious to find out what you actually did. That's the name of reciprocity. So um, Alexandro, absolutely. The institution where you did your PhD, your graduate school, matters in terms of your job placement, especially early on in your job placement, but that also predicts what's going to happen later on. I saw one paper um, years ago, and I can't remember who wrote about it, but they found that this didn't necessarily matter. Um, it was more of the research productivity that you actually have. However, here's the caveat, right? So the better the institution that you go to, quote unquote, better the institution. And here's the reason why. I'm going to tell you the reason why is that you get access to resources that other institutions can't get, right? So the difference between a top, uh, you know, a top 50 institution, so if it was a 49th institution compared to the number one institution, um, it's probably not going to matter that much in terms of the resources that you get, and I'll tell you what those resources are. Um, but the difference between the top 150 um, or like number 150 and the 100 and uh, in, in the number one, the resources are quite vast in terms of what you're going to get access to and what, what's going to happen. So the more access resources you get access to, it's like a business, right? The more resources that you can do, the more financing that you can get access to, the better off that you can be more productive um, and use these resources in a different way. So what are these resources? So the, the number one resource, and this is the only thing that truly does matter, it's going to be like 60% of what's going on. It is going to be access to other scholars that um, are significantly resource productive or, or that are productive. So you get to work with them, you get to understand how they're doing things and what they're about. Sometimes you get access to, you know, they, they might help you, you might do a small portion of a paper and they will, you know, small sort of task on a paper and then they will allow you to be on, on their na the name on, on the research publication. You know, there's lots of things like that that you get access to. They might be journal editors, for example, and they know what the state of the art is, but also how to navigate the review process. Like there's a lot that goes on. That's the number one thing. Um, you also do get more research funding at some of these institutions. So like the very top um, universities like Harvard Business School, for example, if you got into that, um, the research funding is a lot more. You get access to many different TA, um, RAs and things like that. That's a really big thing that you're gonna get access to. Another thing is the amount of teaching that you sometimes have to do as a graduate student. Right, the less teaching that you do, and I know that this sounds weird, but the less teaching that you do as a graduate student is going to help you get placed uh, because you could dedicate on research. As long as you're doing the research and as long as you're actually putting in the work, that's the challenging part and that's what the struggle is. Um, you get also access to a broader network of different conferences and things like that, right? So there's a lot of these little tiny conferences that people go to, and these little tiny conferences are actually really good because then you get contacts with other people in sort of like-minded um, schools that um, might end up hiring you because you talk to them, if they find out you're a really nice person and you know, you're bright and all those kind of things, that matters tremendously. Uh, in terms of what's going on because you know it's easier to hire somebody that you actually know if you get that resume or that what's called your CV um, if you get that 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 CV from somebody that you know it's going to dramatically help what's gonna um, you know in terms of going through the hiring process because you're gonna flag that person just like anything else in the real world 
right? So there's all these different factors that you're thinking about or that you can get access to that other people don't get access to at a higher level institution. Um, you know, the one thing that is, here's the caveat though, right? So even at the bestest universities, like the most well-known universities, so what those people end up doing is they end up having to work at either a lateral, um, so if they get hired on at someplace else, they get lateral positions at a really good university or they get rank, go to a, a lower ranked university, un, university. And then sometimes those people work their way up to the higher ranked um, universities. There's this really big pecking order that happens. Um, a proxy, it's not a good proxy, but a proxy is looking at different rankings that you might see. I've got one on the Reciprocity Project, if you go check that out. Um, and uh, there's also rankings at, um, you know, US World News and stuff like that. The one, the reason why I prefer the one that I'm building out is because you get access and information on the resources that are provided. Um, but, you know, like there is a lot of different rankings that are out there. The one that we pay attention to is UT Dallas um, publication. Um, so that is what deans are going to pay attention to, for example, the UT Dallas ranking. And if you look that up, it's just a number of scholarly publications that you have. And, and that's really what you're looking for. It's not teaching. It is just research. That's the only thing that's going to matter to get you a job at the door. I know that that seems weird. So the way that this whole, whole works is that teaching, if you get really bad scores on teaching, so you're gonna have to maybe teach once or twice, um, maybe, right? No more than that. You don't wanna teach more than that. So if you teach once and you get really um, decent scores, that's all, all that matters, right? If you get really bad scores and you just bomb, um, that's gonna be a signal that they might be a little like careful. So there's a couple of schools if you wanna go work at those particular institutions, I'm gonna say that they're virtually impossible to go work at those institutions. So don't even like have your hopes up to try to go work at those institutions. Um, that te um, teaching ratings do really do matter, right? So um, Stanford GSP, the graduate school, uh, as, as well as graduate school of business, you know, um, the Harvard Business School, um, and INSEAD, like these kind of institutions that place value on teaching as well as research, those ones do matter, but they're really hard to get into. Um, London Business School, so all of those ones that you have probably heard about in terms of MBA rankings, but you know, those are components of a bigger thing, right? But the biggest predictor of most institutions, no matter where you look at around the world that they're gonna be looking at is research. So if you don't have that research, it's going to be hard to get any sort of publications. So all of these things matter in terms of where you're gonna go and what you're going to do. You, if you have five research publications, so in my field, if you had five research publications when you graduate, you would be considered very much a star. Um, so in strategy, you would be considered the probably the best candidate that anybody has ever seen um, or one of them that they've ever seen, right? So that is really hard. But say in a, in, in a different field, five publications does not seem like much, right? Um, you would get tenure. I think you get tenure at Wharton somewhere between six. It's probably more like eight publications now. But the tenure pro uh, length is really long at these, some of these institutions. So, you know, you have to look at that. What does that mean, right? Like, how, does that, how do you actually get there? So that's why you see to get there in that certain amount of time, you need all of the resources given to you that is going to help you accelerate to get there. And um, then once you're at those institutions, you keep getting access to different resources. You know, whether it's graduate students that are, um, you know, that, that are very sharp, they have all sorts of great ideas um, that you get access to different research teams, all of those different things. Plus, you know, money, money is only a small part of it. Um, people think that money is like this huge thing. It's really not. Um, it's a small component of it. What's really more important is that sort of implicit stuff that um, you get access to, like the, the sort of network of private, um, you know, conferences, um, 
if you are a star at one of these institutions and you want to go to a certain conference, you just say, hey, I would like to go to that conference and you reach out to that person, you're going to get invited, like guaranteed. You're going to get invited. Um, it's going to be really unusual if you didn't get invited to get... Um, uh, uh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> Sorry, knock that. Um, it's going to be unusual to not get invited. Sorry about that at the end. So um, that's all I wanted to say is that the, all of those things compound to really accelerate the career. So you're going to see at the top institutions, there's going to be hiring within the different top institutions, right? And then, the, you know, they, the quarter ranked, um, you know, top 125 or top um, 25 ranked institutions, they're going to be hiring within those institutions. And then, you know, so on and so forth, that's going to go on. Um, those, those effects are very strong. Um, they, they're very, very strong. So um, given the institution that I graduated from, me personally, right, I went to University of Western Ontario, great institution, um, world class in all respects. However, um, do I expect to ever teach at the Harvard Business School? It's unlikely. Um, it's just because of all of these different effects. So with that, give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.